New downstairs basement studio. Figured perfect shirt for it because that is going to be my backdrop. <laughs> anyway, that's the thought process. All right, so where to begin, man? I want to make a cool video for you. Yeah, changing rooms with your sound system. Is a regular drywall room better than a heavily damped room? Does the room that your speakers are in make that big of a difference in the way that they sound? We're about to find out. So does it make a difference with the room that you're putting your speakers in? Well, there's a couple different ways to think about that, right? It, it's like one is what are they going to sound like, right? And then two, for the people that are kind of more into speakers as a hobby, right? Is how are they going to measure? Do they measure differently if it's in a room with drywall and not a lot of stuff to soak up sound? Or does it sound better in a damped room, a heavily damped room like I've done with this one here? Uh, a white insulation goes from floor to ceiling and that is soaking up a lot of sound down here already. On top of it, I hung up these drapes. Um, that's actually a window, so it's got drapes on it. And then I put up some kind of like matching drapes on this side just to, so I can close this area off, those slide over that way. Behind this brick backdrop, you could see this white stuff. It's all insulation. So that was in the basement already. The same insulation that I use inside the speakers that I've been building, uh, that's the insulation out of those Home Chef boxes. I just stapled it up across the ceiling, just kind of staggered it, all right? And then I stuffed it up in the corners. It, it, there's fiberglass insulation behind them too. Pretty heavily damp here. As far as stuff goes, right? Stuff in the room. Um, yeah, speakers all over the place, boxes. Uh, behind this green screen is shelves that have more boxes. Bookshelves are kind of, I'm, I'm not necessarily thrilled with having bookshelves near my speakers. But uh, I don't know. I, I like the bookshelves there. There's going to be some kind of furniture wherever you're putting your speakers, typically in your home. What else we got going on here? Yeah, just objects in general to kind of diff diffract sound or diffuse sound, uh, soak up sound. I've got a little bit of just a throw rug on the floor and concrete floor that's painted. Well, yeah, so to get into this whole does the room make a difference thing um best way to do that let's see. well for sure what i want to do is get a set of speakers that i can be fairly certain are um well tested and have a, a known frequency response um i've got just a speaker for that job the energy 4.1 e that is a cool speaker vintage speaker so i'm going to use those because they have a, a known frequency response and then we'll measure them in here right in this room and then i'll magically transport them upstairs into the old studio which is just a bedroom okay, okay. we got to shut this down get these speakers out of the way My handy dandy Dollar Tree speaker stands. All right, we got to get these speakers over there. Oh boy, man, I got everything shoeboxed in here. I'll tell you. Energy 4.1E. Mm -hmm. 
They're over 25 pounds a piece, or roughly 25 pounds a piece. I don't know, they're pretty, pretty heavy though, um, for an eight inch two way. I guess I just assume that everybody in the world knows energy speakers, but um, yeah, so anyway, a lot of good stuff came from Canada. A lot of cool speakers came from Canada, including energy. This front is made out of, I believe they called it Spirex. Um, it was like, it's almost like a, uh, it reminds me actually uh, of panel bonds like they use for uh, collision repairing cars. That's what it reminds me of, but it's textured. They didn't have 3D printing back then, obviously. Uh, but the idea being is that it's shaped and molded to basically, you know, create less disturbance across the baffle. Um, woofers really close to the tweeter. Um, you know, hardly any space around there. This has got this big bevel around it. Got kind of a waveguide built into it. Uh, the driver is really cool. It's, um, yeah, it's got like a, I guess a polypropylene rib cone. And this has got a, uh, like a half roll rubber surround. It's actually stitched to the cone, which is really kind of unique. Cool looking speaker. Um, the base reflex is actually, oh, I hope I say this right, a periodic vent. Um, it's, it is a base reflex port and everything, um, and it's actually rifled. Uh, and then down inside of there, there's foam to create resistance. Uh, and then this whole bottom area here is chambered and is, you know, packed full of insulation. Um, it's got insulation in the rest of it too. I think this, these cabinets, I don't know how much bracing is in them, but they are solid. I mean, they are like bricks. Um, yeah, pretty nice speakers actually. I like these. <laughs> I didn't buy them brand new. I, I got them used, but man, what a good find. Um, about the only thing, let's see, did I have to redo those? No, I didn't even have to redo the grills. They're in gorgeous shape. So anyway, that's what I'm hooking up right now. Seven mic.
that sounds really nice. Holy cow. They are sounding really nice right now. They really sound good, really clear. Plenty of bass extension. Imaging is nice. And man, it just, when the music stops, it just disappears. Can you watch this stuff for me? Make sure nobody steals it. Be right back. Boy, that's a long chord. Wow. That's a really long chord. I could hook this up in the next room. <laughs> All right, let's get back to work here. Man, I sure got my money's worth out of this one. No idea what it'll do to the sound quality. I guess, <laughs> I guess she'll find out. Yeah, this could be like a, a dual video, like, uh, you know, is there a difference between a three foot cord and a infinitely long cord? All right, well, got to quit goofing around here. It's serious. Amazon basics. <laughs> Whatever that is, high speed. That's what I'm talking about. High speed. The quality of it, you know, looks pretty darn cool. Fancy. Anodized. See the other end. Where's the other end? Brand baby spanking new. Look at that gold plating. This is entirely gold from, from this tip all the way to here. I hope nobody really believed me. They don't fit the snuggest. So if my speakers sound bad, that's why. Just kidding. No, really. All right, let's see what happens. Hey, let's talk about DAX for a minute. Did you know that anything that plays music is gonna have a DAC in it, unless you're just running digital out to something? You know, as far as electronic devices go. So this thing, this little cheap $80 tablet is, you know, this, that's what we're listening to. There's no special settings on it that I have turned on or anything. It's just whatever flat default is. Comes out of here as analog. Goes into the receiver as analog. The receiver is just acting like an amplifier. This is an app called Epidemic Sound, and I'll tell you what, it's frustrating. It's royalty-free, but it's frustrating. Okay, how do I get back to where I was? I don't know. Sorry, it's DJ. You got anything here? There we go. It's working. I got me a dial and a remote for when I'm feeling energetic and when I'm not. All right, so this is Atomic Numbers 3. This is kind of a fun one. A swag on. night. This one I'm going to go up to zero with.
Well, you know what's next, don't you? Yeah, we're going to do an in-room frequency response. We'll see what these guys measure like in this room. See how loud these things get, huh? Let's blow them up. Let's see how the frequency sweep turns out, shall we? This is a very delicate scientific operation here. Old man with tablet. If you want to know more about our mixing and mastering services, please visit us on drmix.com. See you later. So we got our, our measurement result there, right? And these were roughly six and a half feet apart. This is the tricky part because I set these up for listening. So even though you, you also happen to be, well, let's see. Yeah, you're, uh, you're six and a half feet away from the speaker and Yep, that way too. But the mic is less. The mic is way off axis, obviously, right? <laughs> way, way off axis. You know, it's four feet away. Um, yeah, so off axis, that's pretty damn good. Wow. Okay, I wonder what they are like on axis. Let's check that out. All right, take a walk with me. Well, first of all, we don't want to be unplugging a speaker when the amp's on. Should we measure just the left one or just the right one? My thinking is we might be better off testing the right one because of all that distance from the wall to the speaker. Uh, yeah. What do we got? Eight feet to the center of the speaker and the other way. What do we got? About 10 feet. Okay. So eight feet, 10 feet, four feet. Going the other direction, probably 15 feet, I would think. Let's unplug this guy. I like my uh, homemade speaker cables. away 41 41 lands right here maybe I should pick it up two inches
Ooh, man. That you gotta see. 43, 43. This is a signal test for you. Enjoy. I noticed I don't have it all the way down to the 20 hertz range, but you know, this speaker, I think the cutoff on it is like 35. So we should be able to see it in there. So that's one speaker measured from three feet away on axis, on center with the tweeter. Let's we'll see what it does upstairs in the untreated room. <laughs> All right, well, been warming these speakers up and they sound really quite nice. Good song for test and bass. And highs. Hopefully this is the last video I need to record, or one of the last videos I need to record in my upstairs office. I've got the Energy 4.1 set up in here. As far as equilateral distance, they're the same as they were downstairs. They're six and a half feet apart from center to center. And six and a half feet back to the listening area. Now, this is running over a different receiver. This is a Sony STR-DH190. Uh, really cool little receiver, by the way. Um, I'm playing it over Bluetooth right now, and it's on pure direct, so you can turn it off, so it's got no EQ or anything. This little receiver, it's uh, 100 watts per channel. It's got uh, just a left and a right, two sets, A and B. So you can actually run four sets of speakers, like you know, uh, two subs and two satellites or whatever you decide to do with that second set of speakers. This wire is really cheap wire. The cable that I had downstairs, actually uh, 12 gauge and it was pure copper. Um, this is actually 16 gauge and it's uh, copper clad aluminum. I think it'll serve the purpose today anyway microphone is at the same height exactly as that tweeter. Hi, welcome to Doctonics. This is a signal test for you. Enjoy.
got the microphone set up three feet away from that left speaker. We're gonna measure the frequency response of that one speaker. Right, so what I've got to do is I've got to disconnect that right speaker. So one thing I hate about copper clad wire is it actually sh kind of shreds or sheds, breaks off of there. Cheap wire, Amazon basics. And there we are, we're on center with that tweeter, three feet away. All right, well, let's get this party started, shall we? All right, that's just that left speaker. Try to get some decent volume out of it. I think that last one we did was at 30, but it's kind of high. Eh, we'll go 30 again. Boy, just the one speaker sounds nice, huh? All right, you ready for a uh, frequency sweep? Hi, welcome to Dr. Mix. This is a signal test for you. If you want to know more about our mixing and mastering services, please visit us on drmix.com. See you later. Pretty cool. I was expecting much worse for in-room response, to be completely honest with you. This, no doubt, is a crossover point. Yeah, so good job energy on that, huh? That is a pretty steady response in this bare room. Yeah, it's pretty wild. They are old, they're probably 30 years old, but you know, they work pretty good. So anyway, well, there you have it. And I'm gonna just say, hey, thanks for watching. And that is a wrap. Thank <laughs> you.